Hi, this is Trista Sue. I'm on location in Spain. And there's something that I wanted to share with you that I've been recently speaking uh, to the business communities in Indonesia and India. And this is how to properly influence in the marketplace when you're out there in the streets, when you're going about your business. How are we supposed to influence others for the kingdom of God? Well, Jesus simplified it for us. He said, listen, you are to go out among the wolves like a sheep. Now, when wolves see sheep coming, they're attracted to the sheep. They don't run and flee. Now, religious people, when they enter a place, everybody knows it and they run. <laughs> but we're supposed to be attractive to the world. They're supposed to love to be around you. They say, you make me feel so good, and they don't even know why. So that's the beauty of being a sheep. Now, the other quality that Jesus told us to be a lot like was to take on the qualities of the serpent. Now we have to study the serpent to understand what he means by this. Because you've been taught to hate that. But in actuality, we're supposed to put on the qualities of the serpent. Now the serpent has an ability to camouflage itself. So wherever you go, just like Paul said, he said, I become everything to every man. So you camouflage, you go in like stealth. <laughs> and you become like them. You don't do as they do or think what they think, but they'll think you're just one of them. Ah, that's the beauty of a snake. So you are, have the ability to enter into any situation. Nothing intimidates you. A snake is not afraid by the size of its prey. As a matter of fact, in Florida, last year, a python swallowed an alligator. <laughs> It's not intimidated by the alligator, and the alligator was twice its size. And, in, and what happened was the python went, exploded because it couldn't take on the size of its prey. So you are not intimidated by the world. You're not intimidated by other religious people, the Muslims or the Hindus or the Buddhists. Don't be intimidated by them. You go in there like a snake, very wise. You know, the Bible says a wise man wins souls. Now you have to understand what a soul is. That's your mind, your will, and emotions. So your job is to win their mind. You have to be wise to do this. It takes skill to do this. And in actuality, your objective firsthand is to become their friend. Don't go in and try to convert them. You need Jesus. You gotta, this is what you've been looking for your whole life, the blood, the cross. You can't do that. That's not attractive to the world. Plus, number one, that's not even what they lost. They lost the kingdom. Your job is to get them into the kingdom. And how do we do this? We become their friend. So then you develop a long-lasting relationship with them. Take somebody to lunch. Just become a friend. And over time, they will share with you their problems. Now, the other thing we are to do is just help solve problems. You're a solution to the world. You have the principles of the kingdom to help solve problems. That's what Joseph did when he went to Pharaoh. He solved a problem Joseph had. Egypt had a problem. Your nation has problems. That's a beautiful thing about nowadays, is everybody has a problem. And you are called to solve it. So then Pharaoh says to Joseph, where did you get this wisdom? And he says, ah, Jehovah. He said, your God must become our God. We will serve your God too. That's wisdom. That's how you win mind. That's how you win a nation and influence. The another quality of a snake is they study their prey. They understand their mentality. So if an atheist comes to you and says, oh, I don't believe in God, you're supposed to say, you know, I understand why it's hard to believe in God. Tell me why. Explain to me why you don't believe in God. Now their defenses are down and you put the pressure on them to explain to you why they don't believe there's a God. You don't go in convincing them. Now you've offended somebody. And the Word of God says, a brother offender offended is harder to penetrate than a fortress with walls. So be wise when you go out in the world. Another quality of a snake, they're silent. You don't go loud and obnoxious. The kingdom of God is love, joy, peace. They should recognize you're different, that you're salt and light, by the love, the joy, the peace that you bring in when you walk into a room. Another quality of a snake is they wait, they strike when they're sure. So be patient, make friends. Another quality 
is they have confidence in their ability to consume their prey. Don't rush it. Their digestion process is slow. Take your time. Take them to lunch and develop long lasting friendships with people. Now let's look at the qualities of a dove because he said we're supposed to be like a serpent and a dove. Now a dove is also quiet, very pleasant. It's not offensive. It's non frictious. They're not irritating and they're non threatening. So you're supposed to go in, think, use wisdom, think like a serpent, study your prey, camouflage in the environment, and then you look like a dove. How easy is that? Don't go in opposing your belief on other people. Jesus himself did not even do that. Then you've offended them and you don't have a right to impose your belief. They have a right to believe what they believe. So when it comes up in conversation, ask them why. Why, why is your belief this way? And just get to know them. So I hope this helps you. Now go out and influence in your sphere of gifting for the kingdom of God and use wisdom. It takes wisdom to win souls. That's your job, not to get them into church, but to get them into the kingdom. You're not selling a religion. We're selling a lifestyle, a country. So use wisdom when you go out there and make friends. This is fun. That way you don't offend people when they run off when they see you coming. <laughs> so use these tips, apply them in your life, and you'll have an amazing time influencing others in the marketplace.